It's really impolite to walk into a room without knocking. But who knows what you miss out on when you take the time to knock. Sapphire had a pile of money in her room, and I was glad I hadn't given her an opportunity to hide it. Luton, you startled me. Didn't Mother tell you not to walk into rooms unannounced? Mother told me to walk into rooms with a crossbow. She was a sensible woman. What you want? That's quite a lot of money you've got. What? Oh. Yeah. Money. Yeah. Where'd you get it, Sapphire? Oh, that. Well... See... I... Won it. Won it? Yes. At Casino. Which one? Saturnalia. Sapphire go there often. Really? Is it a good casino? Oh, yeah. Good as casino get. You should go, Luton. Maybe I will. So, how have things been? Things way they always been. Slow. Dull. But you've kept yourself amused, haven't you? Don't know what you mean. I'll be back. That's what they all say. I've got some more questions for you, Sapphire. Sapphire busy. Leave her alone. You lied to me, Sapphire. Strung me along with that Madame Lodestone story. What? No. Sapphire told truth. The troll in Madame Lodestone's grave wasn't Therma. How you tell? Malachite told me. You trust him? He's too stupid to lie. And you're too smart not to. Sapphire not smart. Big dumb troll, like all the other trolls. Don't play games, Sapphire. I know you're smarter than the average troll, although I could say the same about some mushrooms. Look, Sapphire don't know why someone would switch bodies. Sapphire just trying to help. She was lying to me. I could feel it. She was obviously hiding something, but it was apparent I needed to know more if I was going to worm it out of her. Come to persecute me some more, Luton? A man's got to have a hobby. Where did Sapphire get all that money from? Ha, ha, ha. You never give up, dear. That's considered an asset in my line of work. Just leave me alone, Luton. I'm sick of the sight of you. I'm sick of talking to you. And I am sick of all your damn questions. Look, you know I'm not going to give up. Why not just pretend you've held out for a commendable length of time and finally cracked? It could be our little secret. Luton, if anyone starts saving up to get an assassin for you, let me know, will you? That's one cause I'd gladly give generously to. 
In the meantime, what about Sapphire's money? I didn't even know she had any money. She claims to have won it over at the casino. At Saturnalia? You've got to be kidding. If Sapphire had a big win, the whole town would know about it by now. No, I'd be prepared to bet it has something to do with whoever she met when she missed her shift. Who did she meet? I've no idea. All I know is she missed her shift because she had to meet someone. Thanks for your help. Oh, it's always a pleasure, Luton. The Saturnalia Casino. Saturnalia was almost legendary. The upmarket casino was situated on the King's Way and was frequented by the rich members of Ankh's high society and hopeful social climbers from Morpork. It was a temple to pride, greed and avarice. And like any temple, anyone with money was welcome. The last person I wanted to see was Death himself, waiting to take me to whatever hell awaits a failure like me. But after Death, Ilsa was a close second. My eyes were drawn to her the moment I entered the room, and I decided then and there that I wasn't going to talk to her. The next thing I remember, I was talking to her. Hello, Luton. As soon as I learn how to offer forgiveness, you'll be the first one to receive it. This is my companion. Two conquers. Pleased to be meeting you. You are Remola Selachi. Not the last time I checked. This is Luton. He's an old friend of mine. Why did he think I was Remora Selachi? We're supposed to be meeting him here. What do you want with an assassin like Remora? What are you talking about? I looked around to see Remora drawing a weapon. Assassins are damn good at what they do, but they're not allowed to kill innocent bystanders. I didn't know if it was brave of you to but I decided to stand between Remora and his target. Interrupting an assassin while he was working was a risky business. So I decided to ambush Remora with the old only answer questions with questions routine. Why did you try to kill that woman? Why does any assassin try to kill someone? Who put a contract out on Ilsa? Don't you know better than to interfere in official guild business? Why would anyone want to kill Ilsa? Do you expect me to discuss a confidential case with you? What do you want from me, Ramora? A swift death and a cheap funeral. Ha! You lose! That wasn't a question, that was a statement. 
You're getting sloppy. You're lucky we're only allowed to kill for money. Because I'd take you out for free, Luton. I'd managed to embarrass Remora in front of a crowd of social notables, and that was bad news. It was bad enough that I had the watch breathing down my neck without the Assassin's Guild baying for my blood. Fortunately, there was nothing they could do to me unless someone paid for a contract on me. Actually, that wasn't strictly true. They could tie me up and torture me for days if they wanted to, just as long as I didn't die. It wasn't a comforting thought. Who was the woman? Carlotta. What are you doing here? I like to take risks. Isn't that what life is for? I've taken enough risks to last a lifetime. You didn't answer my question, you know. Who was the woman? Elsa. Why do you want to know? Jealous? Afraid you might have a rival. All women are rivals, Luton. She's not important. I see. If you decide to be honest with me, I'll be around. It was the most unsettled I'd seen Carlotta get. I guess there was a heart in that cold chest after all. Carlotta didn't strike me as the gambling kind. But then, with her look, she could probably gamble with other people's money. Personally, I thought that took the edge out of the experience, but I doubt she cared. A roulette table sat in one corner of the casino, but it didn't keep my attention. The woman's name is Ilsa. She and I used to be close. It's over. Why are you telling me this? I thought you might want to know. How is the case going? Badly. Mundy's dead. Dead? Yeah. Dead. Murdered. And not a pretty sight. I'm sorry. Don't be. I'll survive. You could have chosen a nicer way to tell me. I thought you might appreciate me getting straight to the point. Do you want me to stay on the case? Is there still a case? I thought perhaps you might like to know who killed Mundy and why. Yes, I owe him that. You can continue with the case, Luton. Do you want to know what happened with Mundy? That's what I'm paying you for, isn't it? Is it? Don't you like me, Luton? What's not to like? You're a woman like any other. Do you look down on all women, or just the ones you know? I have plenty of distaste to go around. Do you know anything about Count von Uberwald? Be careful, Luton. I don't appreciate people wasting my time. Have you heard of the counterweight killings? No. Mundy's murder looks like a counterweight killing. Oh, I'm thrilled. Do you want to hear about Mundy's death? I'm not that kind of ghoul. I never said you were. 
I just thought you might like to know. I don't need the details. Did you kill Monday? What? What do you think I am, Luton? It's got nothing to do with what I think of you, Carlotta. But the Watch are investigating, and if they find out about your connection with Monday, you're bound to be a suspect. So why are you asking me if I did it? Let's just call it professional curiosity. If I had done it, would you turn me in? That depends. On what? On why you did it. You don't strike me as a moralist, Peter. I'm a simple man, Carlotta. I have simple ideas of what's right and what's wrong. The trouble is, things are seldom that simple. It's always somewhere in the middle ground. I try not to jump to conclusions. That must be a tremendous incentive to think everything through. I do my best. You still haven't answered my question. I didn't kill him, Luton, if that's what you really want to know. Do you have an alibi? I told her when the murder took place and asked her if she had an alibi. I wasn't surprised when she did. Frankly, I reckon I could have said any day and any time and she'd have had an alibi. She was that kind of woman. There are witnesses who can corroborate where I was. And where were you? I was in the temple of small gods. Spend a lot of time on your knees, do you, sister? We all need a little absolution. For your sins? Everything I do is a sin in someone's eyes. There didn't seem much point discussing that with Carlotta. I've got things to do. I'll see you around, Carlotta. The croupier at the truncheon table was a man named Whirl. Whirl didn't give anything away for free. The game Whirl was croupier for used a Carrick deck, the distilled wisdom of the ancients painted onto cards. The Temple of Small Gods. The Temple of Small Gods was Ankh Morpork's unique concession to all the thousands, perhaps millions, of small gods that the Discworld was home to. Most of the gods were so small they never got worshipped. The spirits of lonely trees, or the places where two ant trails crossed, and they stayed that way because they lacked belief. Give a god belief, one follower or ten or ten thousand, and it grows up from the void into whatever fanciful deity its followers devise. Everyone knows that people need gods to blame for everything that is wrong or praise for everything that is right. But they forget that every god needs people too. Inside the temple, a bazaar of fanatics, lunatics and cultists of all descriptions were trying to sell their faith to prospective followers. 
two salvations for the price of one. Extra indulgences if you get a friend to join. That sort of thing. The lost and the lonely came here seeking direction. I found it hard to picture Carlotta amongst their number. Malaclips drew attention to himself by virtue of the lack of crowds around him. Even the followers of Flatulus had a small crowd, but for some reason no one wanted to talk to him. It looked as if he had a metal fish hung around his neck. Who do you worship then? Why do you want to know? Who sent you? What do you want? My name's Luton. I'm a private investigator. You've been sent by the elucidated brethren of the Ebon Knight to silence me, haven't you? Their plots are so transparent. It won't work. I have protection. There isn't an elucidated brethren of the Ebon Knight anymore. They were forcibly disbanded. Disbanded? By a dragon, as it happens. <laughs> That's what they want you to think. That was all faked, so that they could eliminate all their traitors and go underground. Even as we speak, they are plotting to control the patrician by putting mind-altering drugs in the palace's water supply. Then it's true. I'd heard that you were the only other person who really knew what was going on. What do you want? I just want to learn from you. Only you can teach me what is really going on in Ankh-Morpork. You don't fool me. I don't? You just want to steal all my knowledge and then use it to further your plans of glory. Ah, but I know that you know that, and you know that I know that. Which means we're at a stalemate. And since you know more than me, you have the advantage in a stalemate, which means that ultimately, you'll beat me. Yes! Yes! I see. You plan to try and use me, don't you? Well, many have tried to use Malaclips, and I have beaten them all! <laughs> no, I can't hide anything from you, can I? Very well. I will let you, for as long as it serves my purposes to do so. What did you wish to know? Which deity do you serve? Ah, that's a big question. Which deity you serve? I don't serve any deity. Then I don't serve any deity either. I'll tell you mine if you tell me yours. Ooh, right. You first. I serve... Uh, yeah. I serve... You didn't finish. I am forbidden by an oath of loyalty never to speak aloud the name of... the cousin of her. Ah, the ancient mystic order of... Yes, I know all about you. I know every conspiracy turnwise of the Wormberg, and all but one conspiracy hubwards of the Great Neff. Your turn. I am the proud servitor of Irata, the goddess of misunderstandings, the mistress of mayhem, the countess of confusion, and the duchess of discord. 
You know, sometimes I think I'm her servitor, too. You get a free gold-plated apple if you join this week. Tell me about the goddess Errata. There is no goddess greater than Errata. Have you not looked at the world and seen all the confusion and misunderstanding? Well, who do you think put it there, hmm? It didn't happen by chance. Nothing ever happens by chance. So, every misunderstanding that has ever happened, Errata was behind them all. Yes. She has started wars, and she has ended wars. Millions have died for the glory of Errata. And presumably most of them believe they were dying for something else. Oh, yes. The goddess is shrewd in her ways. She must be very powerful. There is no goddess more powerful than Errata. Then why doesn't she just make everyone into her follower? Let me tell you something, Luton. Everyone is a follower of Errata. They just don't know it. How come you know that you're a follower of Errata? I only think I'm a follower of Errata. I might be a follower of someone else, but I wouldn't even know it. Errata thinks of everything, doesn't she? You said you knew all but one conspiracy, Hubwoods of the Great Neff. What's the one conspiracy you don't know? If I knew that, I would know all the conspiracies, wouldn't I? You don't know anything about that one conspiracy? Nothing. Then how do you know that there is another conspiracy? Because... when I put all the other conspiracies together, I can see the pieces missing. In other words, you can tell there's a conspiracy because you can't see it. Everything casts a shadow, Newton. At least of some kind. What if the missing pieces are a ruse by one of the conspiracies you do know about to try and distract you from paying attention to what they're doing? No. That's too far-fetched. So is there a formal church of Errata? I am the formal church of Irata. I hold her sacred emblem. And what would that be? The scarlet totem that I wear around my neck. And how do you go about joining the church? I told you! Everyone is part of the church of Irata. They just don't know it. Tell me about the counterweight killings. Rumor has it that the Sun Emperor's private assassin is here in Ankh-Morpork. Silencing those who have found out about the conspiracy to keep the Agatean Empire out of the secret trade talks at Echelpon, thus ensuring that the counterweight continent stature in the world economy is weakened. H hold on, slow down a minute. Who's the Sun Emperor? The ruler of the Agatean Empire, of course. The Agatean Empire? That's on the counterweight continent, is it? Shh. Not so loud. Don't you know about the patricians' conspiracy to deny the existence of the counterweight continent to the populace? He could have us killed just for talking about it. But everyone knows that the counterweight continent is real. We had a tourist from there a couple of years ago. Privately, everyone knows, yes. But publicly, it's still just a legend. And the patrician makes sure it stays that way. So what you're telling me is that an assassin from a nation that publicly doesn't exist is here killing off certain influential figures. Exactly! And all this has to do with a trade meeting at Echelpon. 
Apparently, there may be more to it than that. Why Echo Pond? That's hundreds of leagues away. Yes, but Echo Pond is the nearest port to the Akatian Empire. And agents of the Ochre Revolution from the Counterweight Continent are going to be at the meeting. Uh, I see. What do you know about Mundy's murder? Mundy, you say? Yes, he was killed by the forces of the Eighth Conspiracy of Cleft in order to prevent him from delivering his message. Are we talking about the same Mundy? Does the word Azeel mean anything to you? Azeel? Yes. He was an Ascarian and great nef a couple of centuries ago involved in the Great Light Dam Conspiracy, which culminated in the theft of 12 barrels of light from the sacred distilleries of E, the Lost City. Do you know Al Kali? The dwarf? Yes, he's an associate of horses. A minor player in the greater scheme of things, but dangerous nonetheless. Do you know Malachite? They're planning to have him killed. They? Who are they? Nobody knows who they are. Only they know who they are. Maybe. I think they're the same ones who are putting poison in the beer. I found some rope in the rafters where a man's body was lying. Any idea what it means? Did he have a rope around his leg? Now you mention it, yes, he did. Looks pretty certain that he was hung up by his legs then. Typical execution style killing for some cults. For which cults? Uh, most of them, actually. Especially if they're in a bad mood. Malaclips had a good point. Mundy must have been hung upside down and then killed. Which meant somebody must have cut him down at some point. Which unfortunately meant I'd have to investigate further. I'll have to go. The truth is out there. Trust no one. Religious emblems were scattered throughout the place. The sacred lace of Hyperopia, the goddess of shoes. The holy trolley of Mr. Safeway. The blessed chamber pot of the whinging martyrs of Constipata. Anything could become a sacred relic if you weren't careful enough. Most of the statues were a mystery to me, but I recognized the odd face. There was Zephyrus, the god of slight breezes. And Lamentatio, the goddess of interminable opera. I thought I could see FedEx, messenger of the gods, in one corner.
I was drawn to Mooncalf by his religious fervor. He was the kind of man who wouldn't miss a single event in the temple, no matter how trivial. He also struck me as the kind of fanatic who knew a hundred words for infidel and not one for compromise. Behind Mooncalf was a beautiful stained glass window depicting Morphine, the Angel of Dreams, passing the recipe for the Discworld's first pizza to a mortal. You! You with the hat! Have you accepted Anu Anu into your heart? The name isn't you with the hat, it's Luton. And no, I haven't accepted Anu Anu into my heart. Why should I? For it is written in the book of Kelpie, He who has not the spirit of Anu Anu in his heart shall have his heart eaten by the Divine One on the Day of Judgment. I'll take that chance. Oh, you may mock, infidel, but the Day of Judgment is coming, mark my words. The signs are clear, the omens are unquestionable, the stars are right and the auguries are undeniable. What about the auspices? The auspices are fair to light with a small chance of Judgment Day later in the eon. I think you're taking the auspice. So, here I am, a fresh punter. Why should I choose your religion over anyone else's? Because Anu Anu is the true god of gods, more mighty and strong than all the others put together. About half the gods in this temple alone claim to be the true god of gods. But Anu Anu reveals himself through his divine miracles. Such as? Ever looked at your thumb? Ever really thought about it? Ever considered what you couldn't do if you didn't have a thumb? Anu Anu is the god of thumbs? No, but Anu Anu bites away the thumbs of the non-believer. I'm not convinced. Anything else? Join the cult of Anu Anu now to receive a free faux pearl statuette of the great god Anu Anu, a $90 value, absolutely free. Be the envy of your friends as they roast in the fires of Sogorop. Thanks, but I'll pass. So what is Anu Anu the god of? Anu Anu is above being bound to one single concept or idea. He is power incarnate. Come on, level with me. What is he the god of? It's not to be discussed with non-believers. So this is less of a religion and more of a lucky dip. Oh, I feel sorry for you on Judgment Day. You keep mentioning Judgment Day. What do you mean? Mark my words, it's coming. Darkness and evil shall descend on this city and fetid corruption shall consume the very souls of the unbelievers. Only the followers of Anu Anu shall be saved. Darkness and evil? How exactly are we going to tell Judgment Day from any other day in Ankh-Morpork? By the time you realize what's going on, it'll be too late. It generally is. Did your church buy that window? We are not a church, we're a cult. What's the difference? Demographics. Churches appeal to the high society element. Good for funding, but bad for grassroots support. Now, your average cult has much more of a street-level membership. Not so much money, but easier to get things done. Well, did your cult buy that window? No. It was purchased by the Eternal Seers of Revelation Joe many years ago. It depicts the moment when the Divine Prophet was given the recipe for pizza by the Creator. How come you're working in front of it? The Eternal Seers ran out of support decades ago. It figures. Now let me get this straight. The Eternal Seers of Revelation, Joe, worshipped pizza. No, my child. The legends say that the first pizza was created by the Klatchian mystic Ron Ron Revelation Joe Sawadi, who claimed to have been given the recipe in a dream by the creator of the disc world himself. Allegedly, the creator said that the pizza was what he had intended all along. Those who have seen the original say that what the creator had in mind was a small cheese and pepperoni affair with a few black olives and things like mountains and seas got added out of last-minute enthusiasm, as so often happens. So who were the eternal seers? 
the survivors of the schism of the turnwise ones and the resulting Grand Jihad. Grand Jihad? Yes. After the deaths of some 25,000 people, the faithful were allowed to add one small bay leaf to the recipe. So is this divine figure in the window the creator? Oh no. It is blasphemy for any to depict the rat face of the creator. Because of his divine stature? No. Because it is clear that world creation is not a divine act, but a rather straightforward mechanical function, hence to praise the creator's for me. How does the creator feel about that? He seems content. He's had some success with his design, apparently. The details are sketchy. Well, I'll be on my way. I'll be here should you choose to repent. Did I tell you that we're giving away free tea towels to anyone who joins this week? The only non-denominational feature in the temple was a small pool of water in the central atrium. They say that the universe is full of particles called inspirations. One of them hit me at that moment because I suddenly realized something that should have been obvious. If Mundy was hung upside down, and if Mundy wrote the message, then the message was upside down. Turning it around in my head, I could see that it read 371 to V. It wasn't a meaningless word after all. It was a meaningless combination of letters and numbers instead. Somehow that seemed much, much worse. I'd learnt that Mundy had been hung upside down by his legs before he was killed. Useful though they are, an exit. Come to persecute me some more, Luton? A man's got to have a hobby. I've been thinking hard about Mundy's death and there's something that doesn't add up. Oh, enthrall me with your erudite wisdom, great one. When Mundy was killed, he was hanging from the ceiling, but when the watch turned up, he was on the ground. Maybe the killer cut him down when he was dead. I don't think so. I think that message was written by Mundy, and I don't think the killer saw him write it. Which means someone must have cut him down. Somebody who was in that room cut Mundy down. I don't think it was the killer, and I know it wasn't me. What are you getting at? You cut him down, didn't you? Why should I tell you? I've already told you, I don't think the killer would have cut him down. Which means if you cut him down, you're in the clear. All right, yes, yeah, so I cut him down. Happy now? Why? Not everything has a reason, Luton. But people can usually find reasons for what they do. Well, draw your own conclusions. I was missing something but I couldn't see what. You cut down Mundy so you could search him, didn't you? 
what are you suggesting nothing worse than the truth you're a liar and a thief all right Luton what is it you want what have I got to do to get you to leave just give me what you found in Monday's boot and I'll leave you alone here you want it have it it's worthless anyway what is it how the hell should I know now I kept my end of the bargain you keep yours leave me alone we'll see Mankin I figure I owe you at least one lie get out Luton in my own time Mankin had given me a small coin but it wasn't any type of coin I recognized. I guess I should be grateful to the half-elf for keeping the clue away from the watch. But frankly, I just didn't like the little weasel. That's all for now. Always a pleasure. Somehow, I wasn't surprised to find Al Kali waiting for me in my office. In my head was a list of suspects for killing Mundy, and Al Kali had gone straight in at number one. Mr. Luton, I am so pleased to see you. The feeling's not mutual, Al Kali. What do you want? All in good time, Mr. Luton. Why do I get a feeling that Al Kali isn't your real name? It's not very... dwarfish. My name is of little consequence, Mr. Luton. And the story of how I acquired it will have to wait for another time. Now, if you'll excuse me. Now, why would you want to carry an axe? To hack at people, Mr. Luton. An axe is the weapon of choice for a dwarf, you should know that. Why kill me now? What's the point? I'm not planning to kill you, Mr. Luton. I merely need the axe as a deterrent should you wish to try something foolish. I don't try foolish things. Sometimes they just happen. Then I suggest you don't let them happen now. When you've finished searching me, I know a nice restaurant we can go to. So, you have been a busy man, Mr. Luton. I think you'd better come with me. Is there an alternative? That would depend on how attached you are to your arms and legs. And how much you want them to remain attached to you. I didn't know where Al Kali was taking me, but I was now sure he wasn't going to kill me. He could have done that in my office, and it would have been days before anyone found the body. No, he wanted me for something. I just didn't know what. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting to be taken to see a troll. I've seen some unusual things in my life, but a troll and a dwarf working together? Ah, that was something else. Ankh Morpork wasn't hot at that time of year, but the big troll was sitting back in a wicker chair being fanned. Smart. Out of the cold of the mountains, overheating of their silicon brains was the reason for the trademark stupidity of the trolls. I'd have to watch my step with this one. Al Kali had a brief whispered conversation with the troll, but I couldn't make out what was said. At one point, I thought I heard Al Kali mention a coin from Sorta, but the rest was a mystery. Mr. Luton, so glad you would come and join us. And so punctually, too. Yes, I know you were escorted by Mr. Al Kali here, but the fact that you arrived on time shows that you didn't put up any show of resistance which means you're intelligent enough to realize that we are not your enemies. And since we are not enemies, there is always the possibility that we might be friends. 
You are a quiet man? No. I like to talk. But I like to dance, too. And the trick in both is knowing when to lead and when to follow. Excellent, sir. Excellent. I distrust a quiet man. He generally picks the wrong time to talk and says the wrong things. A talking is something you cannot do judiciously unless you keep in practice. I'll tell you right out. I'm a troll who likes talking to people who like to talk. What shall we talk about? What indeed do friends talk about? Most friendships don't start out with one of the friends being led around by an axe-wielding dwarf. While we're at it, most people know the names of their friends. Of course, how impolite of me. Mr. Alcali, I believe you already know. And my name is Jasper Horst. Perhaps you've heard of me. I have a bad memory for names. It gets me into a lot of trouble. You have a bad attitude as well. That also gets you into trouble. Now, now, Mr. Alcali. It doesn't do to slander a guest, especially one whom you hope to count among your friends. So, if we're friends, I guess Alcali's warning about staying off the Monday case was just a friendly warning. Ah, straight to the point. I do admire a man who avoids skirting the issues. Such a man makes an excellent politician, but is almost impossible to trust. Well, sir, it seems you are now in the possession of something that we would like. And what might that be? Uh, come now, sir. There's no need to play coy. We know you were the last person Monday saw, and we know you have the coin from Sorter. Uh, frankly, sir, we know you have the golden sword, and we wish to make an offer for it. What if I told you it wasn't for sale? Uh, don't be tedious, Mr. Luton. We obviously know that you are in the employ of Carlotta. Hence, we know that you have a price. Whatever she is offering you, we can safely offer double. And unlike Carlotta, I am a troll of my word. What if she's offering me something that you can't match? You don't strike me as a man who would fall for Carlotta's move, sir. You strike me as a man with better judgment than that. Are you loyal to Carlotta? I am loyal to one person and one person alone. Me. That's wonderful. I do like a man who isn't afraid to tell you that he's looking after himself. We're all looking after ourselves. Indeed, sir. Indeed. And I don't trust a man who says he's not. Trust seems very important to you, Horst. Indeed. Without trust, we are no better than barbarians. It is the capacity for trust that sets the humans, trolls, dwarfs, and such above the lesser animals. That and our capacity for cruelty. What a dark outlook you have, sir. Are you a pessimist? Pessimism is a term used by optimists to attempt to discredit those who see the world as it really is. You are a man of the world, sir. I like that about you. Tell me about the Golden Sword, Horst. Carlotta didn't tell you what it was? Horst seemed to think I knew things that I didn't, and that could give me the advantage. I decided it was time for a good bluff. She told me, but I took it for granted she was lying. A not injudicious thing to do. Let's cut to the chase. How much will you pay me for the sword? Suffice it to say, I will pay you its value. That doesn't give me much to go on. You will appreciate, sir, that a golden sword like that is a difficult artifact to sell. Indeed, you would draw a lot of attention were you to attempt to do so. I will offer you what the sword is worth, and that, I can assure you, is more than Carlotta is offering you. I could use a figure. I don't like to commit myself to fixed fees. Those who set exact price tags leave themselves no room to negotiate when the circumstances change. Rest assured that it will exceed ten thousand dollars at the least. Ten thousand, eh? I'll think about it. Well, it's been nice talking to you, Horst. 
but I have other things to do. I trust you keep in touch, sir. I look forward to hearing your decision. You're letting him go? I come now, Mr. Alcali. Mr. Luton is our friend and associate. He is free to come and go as he pleases. I'll let you know what I decide, Horst. But of course. Goodbye, Mr. Luton. For now. I was starting to piece together what was going on. Whatever this sword was, it was clear that Mundy brought it into town with him on the Milka. I guess he was the courier. For who wasn't clear. He must have hidden it in one of the crates on the Milka and then broken into the warehouse to recover it. Only the watchman stopped him before he could retrieve it. None of which told me where the sword was. Or even what the sword was. One thing was clear. I needed to talk to Carlotta. Still here? Here's as good as anywhere. I want to talk to you about something important. Really? I can't wait. Not here. It's too public. Your place or mine? Yours is probably safer. Let's go. We barely spoke at all on the way over, and there was a certain tension between us. Gods help me, I liked it. Well, we're alone. What did you want to talk to me about? You've got a lot of smooth moves, Carlotta. You've managed to string me along like a kitten. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you lying to me, sister. I'm talking about the way you used me to track down Mundy, and how you were planning to cut me out of the action when I found him. You're paranoid, Luton. Oh, I know I'm paranoid. But just because I'm paranoid doesn't mean you're not a lying, thieving lowlife. Tell me about the Golden Sword. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I think you do. And so does Jasper Horst. You spoke to Horst? Yes, I spoke to Horst. And he seemed to think that I had possession of the sword. Apparently, Mundy had it. Only, he died before he could deliver it. Horst thinks I killed him and took the sword. I didn't want you to get involved, Luton. It was too dangerous. Ah, don't pull the hysterical woman act on me, Carlotta. It won't work. All right. You got me. I used you. Everybody uses everyone, Luton. It's the way of things. Friendships are just what happens when you've used someone for so long it becomes habitual. You're a bitter little lady. It's a bitter little world. What now? You tell me everything. Why? Because you need me. I don't need anyone. You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? But even you aren't totally independent, Carlotta. You need the Count's money, for one. One word from me and I could get you cut off. He wouldn't dare. He's too bound by tradition. Perhaps. But can you really afford to take that chance? What's the deal, Luton? Straight cut. I'll help you recover the sword. We split the profit. You think you can trust me enough for that to work? No, but this isn't about trust. It's about money. You don't trust me any more than you trust Horst. But I figure you'd work with him if it got you the money. You're smart, Luton. But you've got one thing wrong. What's that? 
I trust you more than I trust Horst. Oh, I'm touched. But I reckon you'd trust a rattlesnake before you'd trust Horst. You're a good judge of character. Hang around with scum long enough and you learn to tell the different types of scum apart. Horst is the treacherous kind. What about me? You're just a woman, Carlotta, and that's not a compliment. Why do you hate women so much? I hate everyone and everything. No one gets special treatment. Now tell me the real story between you and Mundy. Mundy wasn't my lover. He was my contact. He was supposed to be bringing the artifact in from Sota, but something went wrong on the way. I don't know what it was, but Mundy never made his rendezvous. I went with Reagan to the wharf to meet him, but he wasn't there. Who's Reagan? Tut, tut. We have been lax in our investigating. Just tell me who he is, Carlotta. Henning's friend, if that's a meaningful word when it comes to the old relic. You should talk to him about Reagan, not me. Do you know where Reagan is now? No. He dropped me at the Temple of Small Gods, and that's the last I saw of him. Did he know what was going on? Reagan? Ha! Huh. No, I never told him anything. Everything I told him would have gone straight to the Count. Anything else you haven't told me? I'm sure there's plenty of things I haven't told you. The girl's got to have some secrets. You're trouble, Carlotta. Admit it, Luton. You like trouble. What if I do? I know what's going on inside of you, Luton. You're just like any other man, only a little more so. When she kissed me, fire burned in my veins and I felt alive. Have you ever kissed someone who you didn't know whether to love or to hate? Well, other than your parents. Not that I'm prying into your private life, just trying to get my point across. Something changed in me at that point, and I knew I'd never be the same again. I guess we have a deal then. With my brains and your looks, we could go places. What about with my brains and your looks? We could still go places. They just wouldn't be as nice. I'll see you around, Carlotta. I hope so.